Hey guys, I'm currently not at home as you can see and what's more is that I've been basically um, lying in the bed uh, the last couple of days and recovering from a cold as you may hear from my voice so um, certainly not the best time uh, all the while watching my portfolio being basically cut in half or something like this. Um, terrible times for um, yeah, being invested in growth stocks and in Chinese stocks in particular so lots to discuss in this video. So one of the triggers for the sell-off was possibly um, the investment bank JP Morgan who um, issued this um, note here around the China internet, the ADRs, the, uh, the, the stocks that we are invested in and um, basically said that um, they have downgraded 28 stocks like Jingdong, Bilibili, Pinduoduo and so on. And basically they're saying that the current drivers of the share price weakness in the sector are both sentimental and technical as opposed to fundamental. And that of course is something really annoying because for instance I'm usually looking at the fundamentals of the business and the business model, the product, um, the potential five year out, ten year out and also um, uh, the financials. Uh, but right now it seems like most of this uh, doesn't count at all and we see that in the valuations uh, several companies even uh, trade below their um, price to book and uh, so uh, mostly it's driven by uh, geopolitical events and um, of course we had uh, lots of that in the last couple of days. It seems that investors are currently discounting that uh, something that happened to Russia uh, could actually happen to China as well. So basically the US weaponizing the financial system in order to deal with the Russian escalation and their invasion in the Ukraine and punishing them with sanctions um, using the SWIFT system and uh, many more sanctions and um, well, it seems like uh, the, uh, yeah, the stance by China is usually that they are neutral in this conflict. Uh, today there was a statement by the foreign minister of China, Wang Yi, who said China is not part of the crisis nor does it want the sanctions to affect China. And also an interesting piece in Ukrainian media where the ambassador of China to the Ukraine uh, said that China is a friendly country for the Ukraine people. China will forever be a good force for Ukraine both economically and politically. We will respect the path chosen by Ukrainians because this is their sovereign right of every nation, the ambassador said. And while these are the official statements by Chi Chinese politicians, um, we often don't hear about that in the Western media. Uh, instead we have uh, stories around uh, that um, Russia has asked China for military support or China even knew about the invasion before and of course that China is not um, officially condemning it and um, yeah the US is putting lots of pressure on China just yesterday they had a high level meeting in Rome and basically reiterating the fact that they are watching China very closely in case they are doing something to avoid the sanctions or to well, deal militarily uh, and help uh, Russia in this area uh, then of course the US uh, would also yeah, sanction China in this regard I would guess and I think this is the fear of investors and um, so this gets kind of uh, included in the stock prices right now. Additionally we had fear around the delisting there was news that uh, five companies have been named um, to be delisted they have uh, basically just um, received this first notice that their um, accounting uh, firm is not um, um, being able to be audited by the PCAOB this kind of second audit uh, or the oversight at least and so this is kind of a standard practice they need to issue this message because um, of course the holding foreign um, companies Ac accountable act um, is stating that um, in, if they uh, don't meet these kind of requirements uh, in three consecutive years uh, then uh, they will be delisted and uh, so of course they need to say okay for year one you didn't meet it right. On the delisting issue we have once again a statement by the um, CSRC so the Chinese counterpart going out and say uh, once again that they had good talks with the PCAOB and the SEC and they are expecting uh, to find a solution. Also one of the um, biggest or most important bankers in uh, China uh, also uh, shared the same view and also called the sell-off um, irrational based on that and uh, additionally we have even also from the PCAOB 
um, at least some signal there uh, saying that yes they have uh, made progress in their talks but anyways of course um, still Chinese stocks could get delisted um, in the case of NIO and some other stocks they can then go to Hong Kong and um, I've seen that uh, companies uh, or funds like um, or and ETFs like grain shares are now converting uh, their ADR holdings from uh, US dollar holdings into Hong Kong dollar holdings so um, listed in, in uh, Hong Kong and so yeah how this will play out also in the macro context of um, yeah, SWIFT being uh, used as a, as a weapon there and uh, maybe some people are losing trust in the US dollar or um, at least want to become more independent. I don't know, uh, crazy times ahead. So this news um, once again has reiterated the uh, fear for delisting um, and that didn't even um, help for companies that are listed in, in Hong Kong it seems. Also in Hong Kong we saw sharp sell-offs but that might actually be even the case because of some other reasons. We, uh, Hong Kong is close to Shenzhen and in Shenzhen we have announcement of new COVID lockdowns so the zero COVID policy seems to get at their limits now with Hong Kong cases spiking and now uh, Shenzhen also kind of um, starting to see the first um, bigger cases there. Uh, Shenzhen going into a lockdown as well. However, I've also looked at some yeah, insiders, I'd say, and according to them, uh, it may also be a little bit overblown in, w in the way it is reported so that um, uh, some of the manufacturing will keep on running or uh, there will be kind of middle ways in some regard. So it's not a kind of a full shutdown as we may um, think about it. Uh, and uh, we had actually such regional shutdowns in the past in China pretty much ongoing uh, from time to time and they were actually able to uh, yeah, uh, limit the, the spread of the virus. However, of course, at some point the question there is how long can they do that? And, and of course, and there have been now even um, some leading voices in China coming out and said like, um, well, we see now that Omicron has um, uh, less severity and uh, actually are calling for that we need to rethink our policy. So that in the end may even um, start an end to the uh, zero COVID policy, who knows, uh, at some point in time. But of course um, the, the effects for a lockdown so far would be severe. Um, I think that's why they discounted, for, uh, for example, EV manufacturers um, because they cannot book deliveries if they cannot um, bring the, uh, the car to their customer, right? And um, so far it's good that Shanghai is open, which is the most important part for um, NIO and also for the Tesla Giga Sh um, factory. Um, but uh, Shenzhen uh, is not so much of a hotspot for NIO, I think more for Xpeng, to be honest. And, uh, but anyways, uh, those kind of um, lockdowns, if they continue, will of, co of course have an effect. However, there's also good economic data coming out today. China retail sales up 6.7% year over year um, versus 3% expected. Industrial production 7.5% versus 3.9% expected. Fixed asset income investments 12.2% um, versus 5% expected. Um, home sales declined, uh, it's a little bit weak here, 22.1% year over year uh, decline from Je uh, January to February and investment in real estate development grew in China 3.7% slightly year over year, January to February. So these economic data uh, are actually quite healthy and good. Generally, I think we've seen pretty good earnings in most cases from uh, the, the companies in China so far and um, possibly they can continue to meet them as the growth target has been reiterated at 5.5 percent for this year and um, well so the fundamentals uh, might be uh, still in line and okay going forward but as this JP Morgan report um, issued basically fundamentals don't count in their views right now and it's all quite emotional right now when it comes to trading so um, that going into a week where, where tomorrow we have the Fed meeting so deciding about uh, interest rates hiking uh, where we might expect uh, the 0.25 uh, interest height hike and uh, maybe an outlook on uh, what the rest of the year will bring and um, on top of that uh, on Friday I think we have um, uh, options expiry um, quad widging uh, so both of those two days should be very volatile again and then of course in this context with 
affected geopolitics, war, and lots of fear and uh, fud around um, China. That's obviously uh, not looking very well for um, those uh, Chinese stocks in particular. But also, I have to say, also my other growth stocks like Tesla hasn't been doing well recently, uh, Cloudflare, uh, some stocks um, that I'm invested in currently um, yeah, are also struggling. And so in general, we have to see like really what will be the decisive uh, steps taken by the Fed tomorrow and will this lead us into a recession or even stagflation or um, maybe a dovish um, turnaround by the Fed and actually uh, more quantitative easing or at least not a tapering, who knows. Um, certainly we see, I think, that the markets are pretty stressed out by the liquidity. And uh, interestingly, uh, coming back to JP Morgan there, um, they have been the counterpart of the nickel short squeeze. Um, so a, a Chinese tycoon who has been uh, short against nickel and we know that the commodities have been spiking and in particular nickel. And so uh, I don't know what's the, the context of that, but uh, it seems like the markets and the market participants are really scrambling for liquidity and even exiting bonds and uh, yeah, everything else. So lots of fear in the markets. I have no idea where it will go, but um, yeah, these are my quick takes on that. Um, thank you guys for watching and see you in the next one.